Are a stunning number of our Olympic athletes in abusive relationships? That may be the thought that pops into your head after seeing so many men and women on TV in the national and international spotlight sporting horrific bruises all over their bodies that don't appear to be related to their sport of choice. But no, this is the result of cupping, an alternative medicine treatment that gets new publicity every couple of years whenever a new idiot appears in the spotlight sporting those bruises. Cupping is a practice related to acupuncture, but instead of using needles, cupping uses cups, obviously. Uh, Little upturned cups that go on a person's body, and then the practitioner either pumps air out of the cup or uses heat inside the cup to create a vacuum. And that suction effect makes the bruises that appear all over the person's body, which is both horrific and also pretty smart from a marketing perspective because so many people can easily see who has been using cupping, including superstars like Michael Phelps. And Michael Phelps is an extremely successful gold medal winning swimmer, so it must work, right? Like, I have a tiger repelling rock and you don't see any tigers around here, so it must be working, right? Like most pseudosciences, cupping practitioners claim that cupping can cure pretty much everything, like uh, clearer skin and better muscle performance and less hypertension, pretty much anything you can think of cupping can cure. But what does the science say? There have been a few studies done on cupping, but it probably won't surprise you to find out that not many of them included scientific concepts like control groups and double blinding. A few researchers, including noted former alt-med practitioner Dr. Edzard Ernst, teamed up to look at all of these studies related to cupping. And what they found was that there is absolutely no evidence to support nearly all of the claims made by cupping practitioners. I say nearly because there may be a very scant amount of evidence for the idea that cupping might help with pain relief. But again, it might not surprise you to learn that even those studies that showed that there might be a small amount of relief that cupping gives you for pain weren't very good studies. So we're going to need more research to see if even that is what cupping can do. What's clear, though, is that there is no evidence, nor is there any known mechanism for cupping making you a better swimmer or a better gymnast or a better holier-than-thou celebrity. Wait, stat that. There is one possible known mechanism where cupping might make you a better athlete, and that's in the idea that believing you have an advantage may actually help you perform better. Of course, this only works if athletes like Michael Phelps are still continuing to train as though they don't have an advantage. If Phelps replaced all of his swimming practice with cupping, then yeah, he's never going to even make it to the Olympics. But if he replaces watching TV with cupping, then sure, it might actually give him an advantage in that he might feel more confident, more mentally prepared to swim. Stranger things have happened. So sure, cupping might have an advantage there. But no, cupping won't help Michael Phelps in terms of increasing blood flow to his muscles, helping him swim faster, longer, harder, whatever they're claiming it will do. It doesn't work that way. And possibly the best proof for the fact that it doesn't work that way, aside from all of the missing scientific data for it, is that if it did work that way, it would probably be in the same category for the Olympics as beta blockers and non-inflammatory steroid use. Uh, In other words, it would be banned. 